from the Seahawks. And, you know, the really small bit of news is we're in the offseason. I mentioned how busy, you know, from May on we're going to get, you know, there are going to be weeks like this with the Seahawks where it's just going to kind of peter along and we're not going to get too much going on. Uh, we go over into our Mariners who uh, – <laughs> The road series in Minnesota didn't go too great, um, but returning home, you know, there's there's been positives throughout the week, so it's not like some weeks throughout the season so far where it's been, you know, all panic um, there. So we'll go into it. May 6th at the Twins, the team began a four-game road series in Minnesota at Target Field. Uh, game one on the six was a one to three loss. Our player of the game designated hitter Mitch Garver. Garver, a former twin, uh, recorded one hit and one RBI, driving in the only run the Mariners got this day. Seattle, three hits on the day. They struggle against young twins starter Simeon Woods Richardson, striking out a ton, and they're not able to do anything uh, despite having some big opportunities late into the ball game. May 7th. The next day uh, at the Twins, a 10-6 victory. Our player of the game catcher, Cal Raleigh, one hit, two runs, four RBIs, and one walk. Raleigh, uh, with a pinch hit grand slam late into the game, sparked the Mariners' offense after they had gotten a, laid, a lead early, lost that lead, was able to jumpstart the offense, and the Mariners were able to put a 10 spot on Minnesota to take game two of this series. Quickly here, we'll look at it. I was actually in Minnesota for the first two games of the series, uh, May 6th as a fan, May 7th covering the team. So I'm going to include my vlog for May 7th into the episode right about here. And I will also put a timestamp if you want to skip it right about here. Hello, everybody. Charles Hamaker here with you with Circling Seattle Sports. I'm hoping I'm not about to get hit by someone on a bike. I can hear the bell behind me. Um, this is day two. Oh, free handbag. <laughs> day two in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, yesterday, by the time that I'm recording this, that vlog should be out. Or the, by the time that you see this, obviously it'll be out hopefully. But went to game one of this four game series between the Twins and our Mariners as a fan. They would lose that one, one to three. Really got to experience a lot of Target Field, which is kind of cool. A little disappointed that gates openly open for fans just an hour before first pitch. Feels like I could use some more time to explore the ballpark, but you know, what are you gonna do about it? Um, but no, so today covering it, credentialed for today. Uh, media gates open at two o'clock. I'm a little early, I believe I'm 10 minutes out from two o'clock right now and uh but getting there so i make sure i can find the right entrance and all that but no excited to see it excited to cover my first road baseball game um and see how the rest of that goes so you know we'll include what i can throughout this and show you throughout my day here so here we go
the time of the game is three hours and one minute. The winning pitcher is Stanek. He is one and oh. The losing pitcher is Alcala. He is one. Okay. So you've probably seen a few different things. I think I included me going to the chicken spot I've been at the last two games. I got to use the little door finally this time, which was nice. But um, truthfully, I liked the chicken wings that they, I had yesterday as opposed to the tenders today. I just, I am an advocate of more stadiums, ballparks, venues having hot sauce when you've got chicken tenders, right? Every venue can sell chicken tenders, right? Why? So, I'm sorry. Go back. Every venue can sell chicken tenders. So why aren't we selling hot sauce? Hot sauce is just such a natural companion for chicken. Am I wrong? Right? So, anyway. Uh, no. I mean, it's been really cool to go through Target Field um, the last few days. Yesterday as a fan, today as working press. Um, it was a good game today, coverage-wise, just because there was a lot of action and the Mariners did win. So, you know, it's always more fun when the team you're covering wins, at least in my opinion. Fan engagement's better. Um, you know, it just, the guys are easier to get quotes from, at least interesting quotes, right? Um, so, just better in my opinion. Um, pretty sure I'm the last one in this press box right now. If not, I apologize to anybody who has to hear this. But, um, no, like, good to see a lot of the folks, um, sorry about that. Good to see a lot of the folks that, you know, well, not a lot. There's only a few guys from PR uh, Divish, Ryan Divish from the Seattle Times, and Shannon Dre are good to see the, uh, radio and TV guys, uh, Dave Sims was happy to see me, Rick, Rick was happy to see me, um, messed around with Aaron Goldsmith, I was, uh, being a, can I swear, I was giving him, I was being a smart, smart guy, I was making smart comments to him, as he and, um, uh, he and Gary Hill were inspecting some of the baseballs that Perry Hill uses for infield practice, right? Uh, they eventually use for uh, batting practice. And because I was giving him lip, uh, Goldsmith pulls out a, uh, a good shiny baseball. Good shiny baseball is called a pearl, right? No imperfections, uh, just really nice and shiny and clean. And he goes, it's nice and smooth, like his head. And he looks at me and I was like, God, God damn it. So... No, I mean, there's a lot of great folks who cover the team on a regular basis. So, always happy to see them and, and really cool to cover my first game on the road. I feel bad. A lot of folks are like, oh, see you tomorrow. I'm like, nope. I fly back to Seattle tomorrow. So, uh, got a rain game to cover tomorrow at Lumen. Uh, I should get in around 5. So, I'll literally have to go from the airport to the stadium which is fine because the light rail runs that way. But, you know, um, no, I, I really enjoyed the experience. You know, the ballpark was great. Um, the, the game I got to cover was a lot of fun. Um, so, no, hard to be, you know, mad at any of that as I try to cover this credential up because you're not supposed to show credentials ever. Um, but no, really enjoyed that. I might include something, another video of me yeah, after this. Might not. I've said that in a lot of, of these vlogs that I've done. And then I'm going to sleep. Um, I got a lot to do. So uh, I'm trying to get back to the hotel, use the little hotel desk that they provide. Um, we're also not trying to wake my parents up. So we'll see. But uh, really enjoyable. Um, Really happy with how this all went. As I'll oh, show everybody the ballpark here. The only folks that are around right now that I can tell are those who are uh, cleaning up the stadium after it's closed. But 
you can just kind of see. Yeah, really cool. So anyways, that's likely it for me. So hope you enjoy it. Um, covering the Mariners on the road here at Target Field. Okay, that was <laughs> almost bad and awkward. I got stuck <laughs> trying to leave because I don't know, you know, I, they're <sighs> kind of funky. It's not as clear the in and out ways as T-Mobile Park. And I don't say that because I'm new here, right? I more so say it because like, when you enter for press level on T-Mobile Park, you're on the, the Terrace Club level. And you can just go back out of the, uh, the, the bridge, the parking lot, or you can go out through the um, third base entry level lobby because the Terrace Club has an elevator connected to that, right? That's not the case here. I had to walk through concourse when I first came in, as instructed by the nice man who let me in. Um, so, I was walking around here at these different gates, and all these gates, right? As there's a... Hmm. I'm gonna let this go by. Oh, they all have these giant padlocks, right? And so I can't go out through any of those because I don't have a fucking key, obviously. Um, so, I don't, but and the other part too is that there are a bunch of exit doors that are labeled, but they're emergency exits. They're emergency exits. So if I were to press the door, the alarm goes off. I didn't want to do that. So, you know, I, I finally was able to find a door that opened and closed like a normal exit and didn't provide an alarm. So that's fine. So now it's off to the hotel. Maybe get some food on the way back. But yeah, unique, unique experience there. So going from there, uh, we go back into the Twins series, May 8th at the Twins, coming off that big 10-6 to win. Our Mariners would lose 3-6. Uh, to six. Uncharacteristic day from George Kirby, giving up a few homers in this one. Uh, and the Mariners offense not able to fully keep up. Once again, our player of the game is Mitch Garver uh, at the designated hitter spot. Two hits, one run, one RBI, one walk, and a solo homer against one of his former teams. May 9th at the Twins to close out the series. Uh, <clears throat> He had Logan Gilbert on the mound coming into this one and looking forward to it considering how good, how consistent that Logan Gilbert has been this year. And unfortunately, again, over the course of a 162-game season, you're going to have the occasional struggles. Gilbert struggles in this game. The Mariners lose 1-11. to Our player of the game, first baseman Luke Rayleigh. Uh, Rayleigh giving Ty France a day off, two hits and one RBI. From there, uh, the Mariners got back home after that uh, that four-game road series in Minnesota to close out a seven-game road trip. They returned home May 10th to begin a six-game homestand, starting with a three-game series against the Oakland Athletics. An Oakland Athletics team that you know is playing just around um, the 500 mark on the season so far. They're not quite the historically bad Oakland team that we saw last year, and they've got some talent on their roster. I say all this, and the Mariners won the first game of the series by a score of 8-1. to one. Our player of the game, shortstop Dylan Moore. Demo, three hits, one run, five RBIs, including a two-run homer. Those five RBIs in a game is a career high for Dylan Moore. The next day, May 11th versus Oakland, uh, a tough one. This was a tough one. Uh, Bryce Miller put in a good game, only allowing two runs in this one. Uh, tough, tough. The Mariners' offense struggles. They lose 1-8. to eight. Uh, The t uh, Athletics are able to bust it open later into the game and, and flip the script in terms of score from game one. Our player of the game catcher, Cal Raleigh. Cal, one hit, one run, one RBI in this one. A solo homer got the scoring started and got the Mariners on the board early, but they weren't able to do much outside of that and after that. So 
from there, we look May 12th, Mother's Day, um, at the final game of the series. The Mariners win this one by a score of 8-4. to four. Luis Castillo strong uh, through six innings. It's his 31st quality start since joining the Mariners. Um, and the offense is able to pick things up. Five runs within the first two innings, including a four spot in the second inning, then adding on as the game goes on. Uh, the Twins do put in uh, a few more runs later into the game, but it's not enough, and the Mariners get the win. Our player of the game, designated hitter Mitch Garver. Garver, two hits, one run, three RBIs, and a walk. I'll also throw in Julio Rodriguez there, two hits, two runs, two RBIs, and a walk. Both Rodriguez and Garver hit homers. Both of them two-run homers, I believe, if I look here, and I double-checked that. Uh, Rodriguez, uh, two-run. Garver, two-run. Yes, I was correct. Uh, even Sebi Savala hits a home run in this one, and the Mariners win to close out the series. They win their seventh series and their last eight attempts. Going straight into it, our player of the week, catcher Cal Raleigh. Uh, I mean, you heard his name a few times. In addition to holding down the backstop, position for the Mariners uh, and being so rock solid consistent there you know calling all of the pitches and leading this rotation and this pitching staff that's been historically good in the season so far uh, Raleigh really big boost at the plate as of lately and, and I mean really uh, to begin the year last seven days six games played four hits one double two homers five runs scored seven RBIs four walks a 250 batting average a 400 on base percentage a 688 slugging percentage and a 1.088 on base plus slugging. And then <clears throat> I'm trying to grab the statistic here for it with Cal Raleigh. Cal Raleigh is the first American League catcher to hit 10 plus homers in his team's first 40 games of a season since Jorge Posada did it with the New York Yankees back in 2003 with 10 homers as well. So Cal, you know, really historically good there. Um, as I just mentioned the stat uh, and looking pretty good as well. So, uh, I mean, you look at this past week of games, you know, the twins came into that series against the Mariners as one of the hottest teams in baseball. The day before the Mariners and the twins began that four game set, Minnesota had lost after having, I believe it was a 12 or 13 game winning streak. So they were really hot. They've really pushed themselves uh, to fight at the top of their division. They've got some good pitching. They do have some solid bats in that lineup, including former Mariner Carlos Santana. Um, so, you know, I the the you look at it, right, and the uh, the one to eleven loss, pretty ugly. But then you look at the the six and the eight there. Uh, you know, both in, in kind of you know the six are just an example of the offense really struggling. Uh, the eighth, an example of, of an uncharacteristic start from George Kirby. You know, so I mean, I'm not super worried about it. It's just more of the same sort of similar frustrations with the offense, with the strikeouts, with the inability to, to keep the line moving, uh, not putting the ball in play enough. I mean, again, I mentioned the game on the six, just three base hits. Um, hard to do much there. And then on the 11th, just everything goes downhill. You kind of flush that one and move forward because you have to, right? Over the course of 162 games, you know, you're going to have to be able to deal with the losses, stomach some of the ugly ones, and then learn from them and move forward. So, um Overall, I'm not super upset. I mean, nice to get the rubber match. You know, you keep, as we've said, s since we've been here at Converge, um, <coughs> excuse me, if you win series, it will help you. You don't have to sweep everybody. It's going to be pretty impossible to sweep everybody. Just win the series, win the majority of the games in the series. You'll be fine. You'll help yourself moving forward. And with that win on the 12th and with a loss by the Rangers, who got swept by the Colorado Rockies actually this weekend, uh, the Mariners move back into first place in the AL West. So we go into it with some injury news as it begins every homestand for the Mariners. General Manager Justin Hollander met with the media. Uh, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Actually, May 7th, uh, we got some injury updates on J.P. Crawford and Dom Canzone from manager Scott Service. Service said they got video of J.P. Crawford hitting in the batting cage in Arizona. He's progressing to hitting on the field. The hope is that he can swing at 100% this weekend in Seattle, which just took place, and then go on a brief rehab stint from there. 
Uh, Canzone is also taking swings, but he's a little behind JP when it comes to his return. He is progressing. He would also need a longer rehab stint. He began it on the weekend uh, with the Tacoma Rainiers, hit a few doubles in two games with them down there, making some loud contact, which is nice, which you want to see. Canzone's got that power. He's just got to make some better swing decisions. Uh, we get to it then on May 10th, the beginning of the homestand, Justin Hollander provides <coughs> excuse me, general injury updates to open up the homestand. For the guys on the 10-day and 15-day injured list, going back to J.P. Crawford, he is expected to return within the week, uh, coming off of that right oblique strain. Uh, Crawford took part in a full pregame workout when the Mariners opened the homestand on May 10th, making throws on ground balls and taking batting practice on the field. He said in passing that he's feeling at full strength physically, physically, but needs to get his timing down. It's likely that he goes on a minor league rehab assignment, but probably for only one or two games, putting him in line to potentially be activated as soon as before the current homestand ends. Crawford sustained a right oblique strain when taking what he described as an awkward swing during the late rounds of batting practice on April 24th, after which an MRI exam revealed a grade one severity oblique strain. Uh, Canzone, uh, updating him on that left AC joint sprain. Uh, he's expected to be back the, uh, this upcoming weekend. Uh, Canzone, as I mentioned, joined AAA Tacoma on the road and began a rehab assignment that we're going to say four games to begin with. So by the time this is coming out, he's gone through two of them already. Um, at the end of those four games, uh, general manager Justin Hollinger says they'll reassess, which would put him in line to return when the Mariners uh, begin their next road trip the weekend of the 17th. With left-handed pitcher Taylor Saucedo, uh, who suffered a right knee hyperextension in that game on May 7th that I was at, uh, an expected return date of late May. The MRI that he underwent uh, after suffering the injury on the 7th was overall positive, uh, and the injury was not as war as bad as initially feared. Um, Saucedo and the club are now awaiting the soreness to subside before they map out a rehab, but they're optimistic that he'll only need to be on the injury list for that 15-day stint. He suffered the injury running to cover first base on the ground ball, but stumbled awkwardly after stepping on the bag. We go over to the guys on the 60-day IL. Right-handed pitcher Gregory Santos, who uh, is dealing with a right lat strain injury, uh, is now as expected return date got pushed back from late June to early July. Um, at the soonest, Santos recently experienced a setback that forced him into a three or four day shutdown and another MRI. Uh, Santos then restarted his throwing program back at the 60 feet range, which pushed his timeline back into July from late May, early June range that the Mariners were hopeful for. He's expected to transition his rehab from Arizona to Seattle, which he has. We did see him on Sunday with the team. Uh, he's initially experienced shoulder soreness at the beginning of spring training and was set back by a lat strain during a bullpen session while he was ramping back up. Uh, we get to some pretty big news here. Uh, Right-handed pitcher Matt Brash, who is dealing with right elbow inflammation. By the time you're seeing this, you probably know about it already. Um has undergone Tommy John surgery. He underwent that surgery on May 8th, ending his 2024 three, uh, 24 season three months after initially experiencing soreness during his second bullpen session in spring training. Uh, Brash had the ulnar collateral ligament in his pitching elbow repaired and a brace installed, which has typically allowed patients to begin physical, re uh, physical therapy sooner. Uh, that's why the Mariners are hopeful he can return in 12 months, potentially as soon as June 2025. Um, he had the surgery on Wednesday with Dr. Keith Meister, the orthopedist that's worked with, um, that Brash has worked with since first experiencing right elbow inflammation in early spring. Uh, the Mariners estimated his recovery in the range of 12 and a half months for major league activation targeting next June. That brace, which I've mentioned, um, which has, was installed around the repaired ligament has typically allowed patients to begin the physical therapy sooner, which is why the Mariners are hopeful that Brash can return in those 12 months. Uh, his surgery was not the same internal brace procedure that many notable pitchers have undergone recently, such as Atlanta Braves pitcher Spencer Strider back in April. Um, Hollander said it could go faster than that. I would ex be excited if it did. I would hate to ever peg that as the most likely outcome, a sub 12 month rehab, but they feel really good about how the procedure went and his ability to rehab from it successfully. 
<coughs> excuse me. Uh, Brash and Meister came to the decision shortly after Brash was shut down on April 27th, just as he was preparing for a minor league rehab assignment. At the time, Hollander said that Brash was experiencing issues bouncing back after each throwing session. Uh, the MRI that Brash underwent with Meister in spring revealed inflammation, but he wasn't experiencing pronounced pain, which is why he attempted a rehab route rather than surgery at the time. Specifically, Hollander said Brash experienced a small tear to the posterior area of the UCL. Uh, Brash led the majors last year with 78 appearances and pitched in some of the Mariners' highest leverage spots. Um, he carried a 3.06 ERA and a 132 ERA plus, with the league average being at 100, with a 34.7% strikeout rate and a 9.4% walk rate in 70 and two-thirds innings pitched. His 2.1 wins above replacement per fan graphs ranked fourth highest amongst all MLB relievers. Uh, before I get into team news, obviously tough to hear that with Brash, just considering how valuable he's been for the Mariners. Uh, something that I thought was notable uh, when Hollander gave us that update on the 10th, he really took some time to talk about the person that Matt Brash was and how his teammates really loved having him around, how big he was for the ball club. Um, so it's tough. I mean, you know, I believe he'll be around the team in Seattle, uh, similar to how Robbie Ray was last year. Um, but obviously tough to hear that kind of when we got the update last from Hollander about how, you know, they were going to have uh, Brash go and meet with Meister again, how he wasn't bouncing back, uh, how they were concerned. I kind of thought this might going uh, might be going in this route, but I, I was hoping uh, that we wouldn't have to see that. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me, we continue with team related news here. May 8th, the following roster moves were made. Um, Oh, here we go. Edward Bazzardo wearing the number 83. The right-handed pitcher was reinstated from the 15-day injured list following a right rotator cuff strain. He had been with the Tacoma Rainiers uh, with a rehab assignment. Excuse me. Left-handed pitcher Kirby Sneed wearing number 43 was selected from AAA Tacoma. Uh, and when he made his uh, debut uh, with the team on the 8th, he became the 1,000th career player in Mariners franchise history, which is very cool. Left-handed pitcher Taylor Saucedo was placed on the 15-day IL with that right knee hyperextension. Right-handed pitcher Emerson Hancock was optioned to Triple A Tacoma. Uh, and right-handed pitcher Matt Brash was transferred to the 60-day IL. May 10th, uh, Brian Wu, wearing the number 22, as announced this offseason, uh, was reinstated from the 15-day injured list with right medial elbow inflammation. Uh, Wu left his start with forearm tightness after just 62 pitches on the 10th. He said he'd been dealing with the tightness in his forearm during the rehab's outings, during his rehab outings, uh, when he had long breaks between innings. He had a long break between innings uh, in that game on the tenth, as the Mariners scored a bunch of runs in the fourth inning. Um, and so there's that. I guess it that one's a little concerning. Uh, it sounds like he just needs to be able to find a way to keep himself warm and loose um, during these longer innings, but something to monitor as well. Scott Service played it down. He said he's going to make his next start, but we'll have to see. Uh, and then as a corresponding move to get Wu back on the 40-man, uh, Tyson Miller, uh, right-handed pitcher and reliever, was designated for assignment. With that, the Mariners sit at a 22-win, 19-loss record, good for first in the American League West. Looking ahead, they close out a six-game home stand with a three-game set against the Kansas City Royals beginning on May 13th. Uh, May 13th and 14th are both 6.40 p.m. Pacific time first pitches, and then May 15th on Wednesday, the matinee game, the getaway game, is a 1.10 p.m. first pitch. Following a travel day and off day in Baltimore, the Mariners begin a three-game set against the Orioles. May 17th is a 4.05 p.m. start. May 18th is a 1.05 p.m. start. And then May 19th is a 10.35 a.m. start. Hey, Charles. Hey, Jen. Hey, how about those apps? Oh, I'm excited. I know. Where are you going to watch all those away games, though? Away games? Huh. I was thinking of coming here since, after all, Rough and Tumble is the home of Circling Seattle Sports. I love that idea. Hope to see you all here.